Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Sarah Liz and I have an extra special project for you this week. I'm obsessed with Craft Roulette. It is a card making game show right here on YouTube. And Mary Gunn Fun, uh, the, our fearless leader for Craft Roulette, reached out to me and asked if I was interested in maybe doing a process video for one of my Craft Roulette cards. And so, uh, challenge accepted, this is what I came up with. The parameters for this card were a fancy fold, colors and dusty hues, something that starts with a D, and pennants of some kind. So I hope you like this project. I'm really excited to share it with you. We're going to start off by making our card base. And this is a standard size for a top folding card. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches. And I am scoring it three inches. And then I'm moving it very slightly to the right. So it's just not quite along that edge. And then I'll score it five and a half. I'm going to turn the card 180 degrees and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I score it three inches and then I shift it slightly and I score at five and a half. And what this is doing is creating almost like the spine of a book that's about an eighth of an inch thick. If I'm honest, I probably should have done a quarter inch. Um, later on, you'll see it's a tight fit. This piece is four and a quarter by seven, and I am scoring at two and three eighths, three and a half, four and an eighth. And this piece is going to go in the middle of the card and is going to hold our pop-up snow globe. This piece is five and a quarter by four and an eighth, and it's just going to go inside the card as a place to write our message, but we're going to do something extra special with that as well. So, so hang on. It's coming. I was really excited when I when I added that piece in. Okay, I'm scoring my card base and they are all mountain folds, but honestly, the card has to be able to fold back and forth both ways. So uh, just start breaking down those creases now. I'm using a really heavyweight cardstock. This is 100 pound um, accent opaque. I thought about using 120, but it might have been too thick. I pulled out my ruler here to try to get that second score line that's right next to the middle. At an eighth of an inch apart, it's sometimes hard um, to really get that creased the way I want it. So you can see here, I have just this tiny little spine on my card to hold all our goodies. Next, uh, I'm folding in like a W shape, um, the piece that's gonna go in the middle. So the two larger flaps uh, on the ends that are three inches long, those are going to attach to the card. And then it's about an inch in the middle uh, that's going to stick up and that will hold the snow globe. So you can see here, I'm so showing you how it's all going to fold around and create this little tripod. And then I will place this second piece on top of it. I really wanted those longer flaps to cover the entire space. I didn't want to have to um, fiddle with that later and, and cover up a seam. So now we're going to cover the front of the card. We're decorating. Um, I have a piece that is four and a quarter by three inches on the bottom. And then I stamped this Merry Holidays from the Simon Says Stamp Santa's Helpers set. I white heat embossed it. And then I layered the pinkish piece on some shiny black cardstock. Uh, and then the top piece, it really was one piece of striped paper that I made um, using my dusty hues and then chopped at the three inch mark. So we'll worry about the sizing later. I'm using a, a black alcohol marker to cover up that fold, right? The matting on the Merry Holidays is black. And I didn't want that white seam standing out and kind of distracting from the design on the front of the card. So this does not need to be neat, but I am being careful not to scribble for too long. I don't want the ink to seep through and show on the inside of the card. When I go to attach this bottom piece, uh, I would rather it hang slightly long off the bottom of the card than cover up any part of that fold. For any kind of interactive card, it's really important that you're constantly checking your folds and making sure that everything is, is going to fit. Um, so I'm folding it back into the tripod. I'm wiggling things around a little bit and just making sure that I haven't put something 
where it's going to keep my card from working later. I'm adding the Merry Holidays next. Um, that pink piece is three quarters of an inch and then the mat is seven eighths of an inch. So it's almost an inch. You could go an inch if that works better for you. Here I'm chopping off that seven eighths of an inch so that when I put this piece on the top, it's going to look like one continuous piece, almost as if it went behind the Merry Holidays. Um, but I, I couldn't actually do that because it would create problems with the fold. Um, and then here I'm going to make a massive mistake. On the back, I wrote that this should have been four and a quarter wide by one and a half plus one sixteenth of an inch. And I think that probably would have worked, but I was going too quickly. I was honestly, this was one of the last things I did for this card. I was going on day four or five trying to design this and and I cut off too much. I turned off my camera. I had a little pity party and in the end um, I just butted them right up against each other. Um, I may go back later and decide to maybe add like a silver strip over top of that or something but for now I was like you know what we're just gonna make it. We're gonna let it be done um, and I just trimmed it off with my scissors which was super easy. It's what I probably should have done in in the first place. So if you want to do uh, the easy version, <laughs> leave it long and cut it off. Right in the middle of that bottom piece, I am adding a tiny magnet from Total Element. I'll link them below. Everything I can find that's still in stock, I'll link below for you. Um, and I, I want to cover up that magnet. I like to really embed them. I don't like it when the magnet creates a huge lump in my card. And so... I took these two snowflakes. They're from my stash. I think it's a really old retired Stampin' Up! snowflake. Um, and I am using just a regular old hole punch to cut a hole in the middle. That standard hole punch is big enough, but I didn't have them punched in quite the same spot. So you see me kind of going back in and fiddling with it. Um, I maybe could have gotten away with only one piece of cardstock that had the hole in it. But I, again, I just, I don't like... I don't like lumps for magnets. So uh, now that I have my two stack die cuts and my hole in the middle, um, I am just gonna arrange that in the center of the card um, and squish that down. Honestly, it's, it's not in the right spot. It's gonna work great for the tripod, um, but, but later on we're gonna run into an issue and I, I'll explain what you can do to kind of avoid that. I added one more die cut on top to cover up that magnet. And now I'm placing the magnet that's going to go on the very back of the card, right? I got to make sure that they line up and that the attractive sides of the magnets are against each other. So that gray piece of cardstock is not secured down. It's just there to help me with the magnet. And I'm setting up my tripod so everything's aligned. I'm going to hold that down. And then I can hold on to the gray piece of cardstock and open it back up to, to keep that magnet in place. Um, it's just got a little dot of glue on it. It's not dry yet. So I'm going to throw some tape over it for now. Um, and, and we'll figure out what to do with that a little bit later on. So now I have the base of my card and we can start working on the snow globe. This part was so much fun. I used the My Favorite Things Tiny Houses and I cut a, a house and it's double sided. And then I have two trees. This is the Altenew Globe Builder, and it makes two different sizes and styles of snow globes. We're gonna use that fat round one, um, and I have cut it from two pieces of silver foil cardstock and then a whole bunch of pieces to stack in between for all of our shaker goodies. There is a snowy hill that comes along with that. Um, they're, they're too hilly for me. I wanted these two pieces to sit in there without anything looking wonky or covering up too much of them. So I'm just giving it a little haircut um, to create more of a landscape feel. These are crucial. This is how I'm able to secure these little pieces into my snow globe. I wanted to add um, some iridescent glitter. There's actually some iridescence that I sprayed. It's an Altenew shimmer spray on the snowy hill cardstock. So this um, glitter from my stash is sort of iridescent and matches. I ended up doing both the front and backs of the houses and the trees and, and then I set those aside to let them dry pretty well. When I go to build my snow globe, 
I am pulling out my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. Anytime I'm gluing to acetate, or even if I'm gluing to the front of this cardstock because it's silver foil, so it's kind of slippery, um, I'm, I'm reaching for this glue. Uh, I love my Barely Art and the fine tip nozzle is amazing, but it doesn't stick that well to slippery things. It'll do it. It just doesn't grab as quickly and so it's harder. Um, here, I'm going to fiddle around and I put it on Cricut the first time. It is a hot, gluey mess, my friends. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'm going to come in with a wet Q-tip and while the glue hasn't dried yet, it, it's not too hard. Um, to clean that off the acetate and even off of the foil cardstock because it is sort of slick. So um, I'm going to finish that up and I did the other um, foil frame with acetate as well. Now I'm going to add my house and my hills and my trees into the middle. So this is just a piece of white cardstock that I've cut into the shape of that frame. So my pieces are going to be right in the center of that snow globe. So snow can fall on either side of them. I'm using some highlighter tape just to hold them where I want them so, so I can glue them without making too big of a mess. It's all a big mess, you guys. There's so much glue in this project. Um, and then I'll glue the other hills on, on the back side of that. Have you made a snow globe card before? There are tons of companies that have snow globe dies and I, this is my first one. I got it in a goodie bag from Jennifer McGuire. And I was like, what is this magic? So this is the first time that I'm using it. And I'm super thrilled. If you've made something with a snow globe before, put it in the comments. I would love to hear about it. I'm adding these snowy hills on to that white frame so that then I can start layering that up. I've cut five or six of those frames. And I'm really just trying to figure out how much do... I need um, to have these fit. Okay. Now I'm working on the inside that you can see the acetate, right? So again, I'm, I'm using my deluxe adhesive and I want to get a piece of cardstock good and stuck on the inside of that because it'll make building everything later on even easier. And then I'm doubling up. This is the base of that globe. Uh, I have two pieces of ground of brown, excuse me, cardstock um, that it will sit on as its base. I've also cut a whole bunch of those from white cardstock that we'll use later to help secure everything together. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more frames around our house and our little trees. Uh, I have to say, I don't usually use glitter. This was like lots of glue. <laughs> lots of glitter. What are your feelings on glitter? Are you willing to use it in your projects? Because I'm going to add some more and I feel like I'm being really brave here. Finally, uh, here are all those extra white pieces for the base of this snow globe. And I have one more white frame that I'm real. I'm just using it to trace where the snow globe is going to sit inside of that base. So I'm taking my pencil and I am lightly drying um, kind of along that, that base. I cut this and I left the little sort of swoopy pieces on either end, like a cradle to hold that snow globe. It was not necessary. Um, if I had this to do over again, I would just cut them at the beginning. I end up trying to cut them off after I've already glued them onto the base. Um, I, I loved making this, but holy smokes, trying to film and then put this in an order that that made sense for a project they've never made before um, was was an extra challenge uh, and i learned a lot about my process as i was going through this um, and editing and kind of watching how i think about things and the way my hands move when i'm not sure or I'm panicking that maybe i messed up my card it takes a lot for me to tear something apart so you can see how the snow globe fits right inside that base. I need to create the same kind of base on that that shorter piece that we scored, right? Um, so this is the part that sits on top of the tripod. And so I'm just going to use my scissors and cut that out. 
it was really important here that I keep sort of a cradle and that the pieces on the side stayed where they were. Um, that, that made it much, much easier later on to put everything together. And you can see that is going to fit just perfectly right inside of there. Because I put a piece of plain white cardstock as a frame on the back side of our acetate, I'm able to use my Barely Art Blue here, which was so much easier. I don't have glue kind of squeezing out all over the place. Um, I'm, I picked up some Trinity Stamps Soapy Bubbles sequins. They have sort of a matching iridescence to the glitter that I just dumped in there by the bucket full. Um, and that's already on the trees and the house. And then I'm gonna glue that down and put something really, really heavy on top of it and just set it aside and let it sit. So now we have all of our pieces ready to begin decorating and assembling the inside of our card. So I have a piece of that pink cardstock that is four and one sixteenth by two and three sixteenths. And this is gonna give us a nice uniform frame. I have a piece of gray stock card stock that is five and a quarter by four and one eighth. And I have already stamped on half of it using this waffle flower cozy holiday sentiments, the warm wishes. And then I've used the snowflakes from both that set and the Simon Santa's helper set. Um, but really, whatever you have, this is gonna be for our secret hidden greeting. It sits on the bottom half. I'm gonna sort of flip that over, okay? So here's the warm wishes and I flip it. And I'm only gonna glue it at the bottom below the score line. So when you open, there's this little hidden message um, that's there on display. Next, I am going to glue this piece to our card base, right? This is what our snow globe is gonna sit on. And you can see, I tried to put the pink cardstock on already and that was a mistake, so I ripped it off. So just ignore that. Um, I am lining the bottom edge of this up just above the score line on the front of our card. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's, they're equal folds on either side. So it's gonna sit right between the two score lines on the card base. You can kind of see that, right? And then I'm gonna glue down the other side, um, uh, in this case on the front of the card, but again, uh, which if you haven't already torn pink cardstock off of it, it probably doesn't matter. You could decorate both sides of this so you can see the snow globe from either side. It's kind of designed that way. Um, but because I only left an eighth of an inch on the, the spine of the card, there really wasn't a whole lot of room left over. So here, I have this little bit of cardstock, right, kind of poking up from the middle. You see that? Um, and, and that's where we'll build the globe. Now, I recut the pink piece of cardstock and I am decorating it with my pennants. Honestly, the pennants were the hardest part of the craft roulette challenge for me this time around. I wasn't sure where they were gonna go and they ended up being a, a wonderful opportunity because I had already stamped that secret message greeting and I didn't really want to put a greeting on this pink piece too. It just felt like too much. So I cut the pennants just by hand. Um, I think they're a half inch by three quarters of an inch. And then these little snowflakes are, I think from tailored expressions. I've got a couple dies that make tiny little snowflakes like this. Uh, and they felt like a nice, festive addition and they tied in nicely with the snowflakes that are going to be on that gray piece that we add here in just a minute. I attach this piece of gray twine that they're all strung on by clipping just a tiny little notch in each of the corners and then I kind of taped it back there. So I wanted to make sure there was plenty of glue to hold that tight, though the pennants glue that down too. Okay, so I have actually two pieces of gray cardstock. Here's my tripod and it's great. But when I try to fold the card closed, you see that the, the magnets are opposing. They are pushing the card open. I figured that out at four in the morning when I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, oh, yeah. 
Um, but it was too late at that point. I'd done almost everything except this inside uh, section of the card. So I'm adding an extra piece of gray card stock before I add the warm wishes piece just to help dampen the magnets and their, their repelling forces. I added glue only on the bottom. So it's whatever's below that score line, that fold line. So this opens up and shows your secret message. You could leave that as the place where you write your personal greeting, whatever is most exciting to you. On the back, I've removed the magnet. And to try to solve our problem, I've created my hand stamped by Sarah Liz, and I'm just creating as many mats and layers as I can to try to dampen the opposing forces. Um, if I had this to do over again, I would put the magnet on the back as close to the bottom as I could. That would mean the magnet on the front of the card moves up closer to the crease. So it would hold open nicely when the snow globe is on display, but especially with the snow globe there, the magnets would be pretty far apart and we wouldn't have that same issue. As it is, this worked out okay. Um, so here's my hand stamped and everything sort of snaps open and holds nicely when I have it set up. I was super grateful this worked out as well as it did. Here, I have those white pieces, the extra white pieces. I've stacked up three of them, glued them together, and now I'm adding the doubled up brown cardstock base to our globe. I can use Barely Art when it's just paper, but here I'm about to add it to the base of the snow globe. This is a really tricky snow globe to use for this actually because the base is not attached. Um, I have another one that will be up on my blog and my Instagram where I'm using a snow globe from Lawn Fawn. It's the Magic Iris snow globe add-on and it's all one piece. So it's a little bit easier than this um, to, to assemble and then attach to the card. So keep that in mind if you want to make something like this, or you could just use really any old die. You can make a snow globe without a specialty die. Um, I am then going to attach this to that part of the card that sticks up and it fits right into that cradle that we cut out of it. Um, and the extra cardstock means that the globe itself has more to sit on. It's not protruding from there or going to fall over. Um, and that really, really helps. So then I'm going to go on the back and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, again, I I'm clipping the little wings off that I fought so hard to keep when I was cutting. They were actually getting in the way. And so it, I just need them to support the bottom of the globe. And I'm going to glue that on um, and get every everything a good press so it's all stuck together. I like the Nouveau adhesive. I feel like it gives um, a pretty quick grab. It's not immediate, but it definitely works. So this is our card. It's pretty thick. There's a lot going on there, um, but it's also pretty cool. You can write your message on that great piece of cardstock we stuck in there and it unfolds and refolds into our base. And then we have this awesome pop-up display snow globe. I hope you enjoyed our project today. Um, do you like pop-up cards? Is this something that you try? I'd love to hear about whatever 3D cards or pop-up cards you've tried. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe to this channel, uh, and I would really appreciate it. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you next time.